When the forecast showed Hurricane Sandy barreling towards New York City, Mayor Bloomberg ordered New Yorkers living in coastal areas to evacuate. Grace Rao joins me now in the studio with the details. Hello, Grace. Well, hello, Errol. As you mentioned, that evacuation order from Mayor Bloomberg was one preventative measure that the city took before Sandy hit. The MTA halted transportation service as well. But some experts that we spoke with say the city needs to go much further in the future. In the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, some people are asking whether the city was adequately prepared for the storm and whether it will be ready for the next one. It's going to require uh, a more comprehensive thinking than we've done historically uh, in response to past disasters. Some experts in the areas of climate change and city planning say New York needs to start preparing for the storms that lie ahead. New York University professor Ray Zimmerman sits on the city's climate change panel. She says New York needs to revamp its transportation system. She'd like to see sections of the subway or rail system sealed off in a storm. That way some lines could function somewhat normally when others are flooded. Zimmerman also thinks the city can learn from NYU. It has a natural gas network that kept the school partially powered last week. We can go a long way uh, with distributed energy, for example, solar cells, if we can figure out how to store that energy so it's available independent of the grid uh, in times of emergencies. And then there's the question of whether the city should build a physical barrier like this one in London to keep the floodwaters out. Mayor Bloomberg has been dismissive of the idea. London has a small river that they put a barrier on. We have an enormous harbor, but the real damage is we have an extensive shoreline. I don't think anybody suggests seriously that you could build a barrier from Florida to Maine to hold back the oceans. Professor Selecki, who co-chairs the city's panel on climate change, says all options need to be considered. It could be that a barrier be, emerges as, as a, 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 the best opportunity. Realistically, though, the decision to build a storm barrier would not rest with Mayor Bloomberg or even with a future mayor. It would likely be a federally funded project that would target New York State and its neighbors as well. Errol? So, uh, Grace, I mean, back to the barrier. It, it, the proposal is not from Florida to Maine. The proposal would really be for across the uh, the Narrows, right near the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, right? Right. I mean, there could be, this is all sort of um, still very much in the idea phase. I should note that even though the mayor has been very dismissive of this publicly, his administration is looking into this as it explores all various options about how to fight storms and floodwaters like we saw during Sandy. This is among them. But, you know, there, there could be some sort of model that would be smaller, more targeted, that might protect lower Manhattan or uh, parts of New Jersey as well. But again, it would probably be a tri-state project involving the federal government and the governors of those three states. Is the city also sort of quietly looking into some of those ideas around distributed energy and getting off of the grid in some cases? I think they're considering everything at this point. I mean, they, uh, they're, the, the, the people that we spoke with for that story are involved with this panel for climate change um, that the city pulled together. Um, so those ideas are definitely being talked about. Um, but sort of how scale they are, I think, remains to be seen. Okay, the climate change report, of course, is online. One of the great unread or underread reports uh, about New York City people should take a look at.